Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at a piece of a relic. This is a programmable logic controller. It's the Telemechanic TSX Nano. And this really brought back some really good memories from when I started doing industrial programming and doing automation as a professional career. This um, exact unit here is from uh, the year 2000, so it's a good 22 years old by now. But it is the Mardicon model, which comes from Telemechanic, but this is at the point where it was actually produced by Snyder Automation. So uh, that's uh, not long before they turned into Snyder Electric. And what I really have found memories about this exact PLC is that it tries to mimic some re really mechanical relay logic, and it especially has this feature called a drum which really goes back to these rotating drums with the pins in, activating prongs as it turns around as a mechanical clock. And I thought that was really a special feature that I, as far as I can remember, was this uh, the only PLC I have seen that made in. So let's take a look at the um, PLC programming software and uh, try to uh, make a small drum program and see the inputs and outputs running. All right, let's check it out what we can do with it. First, we need to describe the four things we need to do PLC programming. We need, of course, a laptop, we need the PLC, we need a serial cable in this case, and we need a big, nice cup of coffee. We need lots of coffee for programming. So let's just get that one over here. Turn on my old Dell Inspiron 8600 laptop here. This was actually my first laptop that I bought back in some 2000s. Could it really be? Maybe it is around 20 years old. The program is normally installed down to the C colon drive PL707. And we have it here, PL707.exe. So let's run that. It's a nice uh, DOS-based program. Now what can we do with a TSX Nano like this and with the drum function that I named, uh, that I mentioned earlier? Now, we all know this, the music box. We can crank it up. And besides being a very horrible version of a music box with a terrifying and nightmare-inducing sound to it, we would like to mimic that drum. So uh, let's just take a look at how this works in, on the inside. It works with by using a rotating mechanical drum that has small pins on it, and these activate the different tones on the prongs, and thereby you get music. Now, the same function exists in this PLC, which dates back to some really old machines. So if we go into the configuration and look at the drum controllers, it is as simple as a matrix like this. It is basically a sequencer or drum machine. As you know it, you can say we have a number of steps here. Now we have how many outputs on this PLC? 10 outputs, so let's have 10 steps. We can do a maximum of 8 steps, so let's do that. Now it works as simple as just clicking on which step, which of the 16 outputs you want to get active. Now we only have 10 outputs, but that's also because you can set some marks, as you can see here, on the different output bits. So we just want to get something rolling on the front display here, so let's just take all the outputs. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And these are the output bits we have over here, 0 to 9 and we have the different steps here. So it's just clicking now that we want them to turn on in this order. And of course it has to loop a bit back. So let's just go with this to start with. We might even uh, make some kind of pattern going like this. So let's see how uh, this uh, turns out. So it should go like, yeah, that will uh, probably look nice. So this is drum zero. So we have now configured our drum. Must be in the range of zero to 0 
And of course it's not totally obvious, but we have to remember the percent sign in front of all the outputs. And just like that, we have now configured our drum. So we need something to drive the drum. Um, let's first put in the drum here and uh, say we want, let's see, the drum, it's probably at the plus, so shift F10. We can put in a drum and let's put it in here. And let's see, it has some inputs. That the R for reset and probably U for the steps. So we have to put something in on the steps here, F2 for an input. Now uh, let's just uh, make this um, mark zero. And then we need something to pulse on the mark zero in order to make the steps. So we'll insert another rung and uh, I'll make my own pulse step with two timers or two uh, pulse timers that use one to reset the other. So we'll start out with uh, a non normally closed gate. We want a timer and we want a output. Shift F2. Um, delete. Shift of two, and then we have the output. Okay, so this is our mark zero, and we want it to be turned off by the other timer, which will be mark one. We have to configure the timer. We want uh, just a single pulse, and we want it to move a bit faster, so 100 milliseconds. And we just have to duplicate this in uh, another round. So let's scroll down to the bottom here. Insert another round. And we'll duplicate the exact same thing. Start out with normally closed gate, get another timer, set an output, and this is of course mark one, and it will be controlled by mark zero. I have to configure the timer with the same settings. Okay, so I guess we are about ready then. So let's go back here. We have our drum, we have our timers, so it's time to connect to the PLC, transfer the program. And this is of course where we need all our coffee for the waiting time of transferring from PC to PLC. So I can only advise you to get some proper nice uh, coffee mark from my merchandise shop. Drink your coffee in style. Do we want to protect the PLC mm, application? No. We want to see it run, so let's get it into run mode. Oh, and there it goes. And it's actually re relay activated outputs. Listen to that, how nice. Let's um, connect to it so we can also see the animation here in the programming tool. Again, time for another sip of coffee. And now we're online, we also have to toggle on animations. And we can see the drum steps running here. And our two pulse timers turning each other on and off down here. Nicely and smooth. So let's see the um, online interface. How well that runs. Okay, so the update rate on this is only uh, once a second. We can see the scan time, we are at 4 milliseconds, so it's not the fastest of PLCs, but I guess we knew that. And I can see that this was um, most likely used 17 years ago last time, so yeah, time flies. I hope you enjoyed a bit of old school programming on PLCs. and. Another feature that I really like about this small unit is the built-in 24 volt DC power supply. So it is only supplied with 230 volt AC and that's it. You can build your own controls with everything available. And I hope you enjoyed the seeing the link between the old school music box to the mechanical uh, controlled machines and up to that replicating this in a PLC with, which is essentially a drum machine and sequencer that everything is really the same. There are not so many different concepts when it comes to 
mechanical control to industrial software and so on and even yeah EDM so yeah everything is the same if you understand some technology you understand everything so learn some more get smarter and yeah just enjoy life so until next time see ya Thank you.